Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Sausages. It is so hot that I need to sit in front of the air conditioner. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. Great. Preemptive like Food Insider. Original link to the video, top of the description below, right below that. Link to the Discord. Click on it. It will send you right over there. Would love to have you. Let's go. Let's get started. In a crowd, thanks to its circular... You were spotted in a crowd thanks to its circular shape. But the reason why you will forever remember this sausage is the taste. With a coarser, juicier texture than other sausages and a flavorful aroma from the generous amount of spices, Cumberland sausages are favorite in the UK. But there are only 12 butchers in the country making the original traditional sausage that's been granted a protected status. Guys, um, so is the only difference between a sausage and a hot dog... Like, is a hot dog technically a type of sausage? Or is a hot dog just a sausage that is ground up super, super finely? Like a salami or... Is a salami a sausage? We're in Barron Furness, Cumbria, England. This county has been the home of Cumberland sausages for hundreds of years. And today we're going to learn more about the traditional method to make Cumberland sausages. A method that will take us back to the times of the British Empire. Let's go find out more. Guys, weren't the first um, condoms also uh, pig intestine? <laughs> to make traditional Cumberland sausages, butchers would have originally used a local breed, the Cumberland pig, which is now extinct. So now they use rare breeds, outdoor pigs, like today's British Lop. And what you find is because they live longer, the flavor is in the meat, and with a little bit of spices and herbs, the sausage is fantastic. So here we have the half of the pig. All right. This is the shoulder. This is the middle and the belly. So we have the loin, which is the loin chops and the belly pork. And then we have the leg. And we make a combination of the leg and the shoulder together. Because in the leg it's lean, and if you only just use the leg, you need a little bit of fat. So we need to combine the both. Makes sense. Right. And when we cut this, you will see that the, 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 the combination is the best. So the knife skills in taking off the meat from the bone, they've got to separate any sinew. I mean, it's got to be a, a bone-type saw. It cuts through bones so easily. I would have think that bones were more like... They're hollow, though. Eh, uh, maybe not. ...you and skin. Okay. Believe it or not, any skin like this in a commercial machine yeah. can be made into a paste and could end up in a sausage. We don't want that, and we haven't got the machine. So it's important that... Every little bit of sinew, bone, cartilage is removed, so we end up with really nice meat. Yeah. I've tried doing that before. And depending on profit, we need as much meat from the bone as possible. Otherwise, he's a very bad butcher. It's uh, so, okay. So this one has been skinned pretty well. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Once the meat is deboned and degristled, these are the chops that will later be turned into Cumberland sausages. Rather than going through a more commercial bowl chopper and being emulsified, the meat is thickly minced to retain solid, chunky pieces. So those are nice, chunky pieces of mince. Question? Or, like, what percentage of sausages, like if I go down to the supermarket and I buy a sausage, like the first one I see, is it most likely going to be pork or is beef just as often used? Turkey's sausage? That we, in a mouth texture would be really good. Yeah, that's true. I can see the fat, but it's not as dominant as you would think. We call that ATVL. So 80 pieces are red, oh, 80, 20. 20 pieces are white. It's called visual lean. We can see yeah. this. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Because you never want to get rid of all the fat. No, 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 yeah. no, no. You still need a bit to flavor. But if you flavor. put too much yeah. fat in, then it comes, it fills up the pan, and that's yeah. no good. And, and it your ruins, sausage shrinks. Yeah. 
but with this, the sausage will stay the same. It may sound obvious, but high meat content in a sausage is never a given. More commercial butchers will use bread or cereal, which is something Peter feels pretty strongly against. The bread or cereal will soak up some of that extra fat. I've been scammed. Every one of these videos, I'm thinking, like, I remember I love, like, I've loved shepherd's pie my whole life. It's been, like, one of my favorite foods my whole life. But then shepherd's pie, shepherd sheep, sheep, lamb meat, lamb meat in a pie. I don't even know if I've ever eaten a lamb before or, or a goat or, or a sheep, whatever. My whole life is a lie. Which will in turn alter the structure and flavor of the sausage. We want a high meat content sausage. We want a proper Cumberland sausage to be yeah. recognized because it's different. And so we applied to the European Union for protection of our regional sausage. And that took 10 years. 10 years, 10 years. to be approved. <laughs> so, this is what yeah. they call bureaucracy, 10 years. Now that we're all set on the importance of the meat, we are ready to learn more about another distinctive feature of our Cumberland sausage, its spices. These are added by hand before the whole mix is encased in the pig's natural intestine. So what sort of spices go into Cumberland sausages? What do we have here? There's in three, here we've yeah. got salt and pepper, we've got a little bit of sage and nutmeg that are finely ground, uh, we've got potato starch and rice flour. Okay. And this mixes the meat and the combination together. Then we've got some herbs, which right. is a little bit of sage, um, you could use a, a fresh sage, but with a dried sage, it gives it a little bit of better shelf life because it's nice and, and clean. Yeah. And then we've got the rusk, which is a, a pea starch. Which is not bread, right? Not bread, yeah. no. Now, it's going a little bit dry, so we have to have a bit of water because all that has to come out of this nozzle. This okay. specific spice blend wasn't random. So it would get According clogged. to Peter, back in the 1800s, German slate okay. miners moved to Cumbria for work and brought their sausage recipe with them. But instead of the spices they were used to, they used spices they could get locally, which weren't actually that local. Spices were being imported to Cumbria from the Caribbean, thanks to the port of Whitehaven, the second biggest port in the country at the time. So there was always a little bit of spice. Sometimes you might even find ginger, but predominantly nutmeg, mace, that looks nice. pepper, and these were the spices looks, that looks made like a nice big the Cumberland sausage very different. If you were working hard in the slate mines and you wanted to have a nice strong sausage, the local spices were fantastic. Wow! But really. The real component was the meat. Yeah, yeah. So now, all together makes something quite I unique. I take yeah. the the intestine of the pig has been cleaned. Okay, so this is the intestine. Yeah. yeah, this is this is the intestine, and Long. basically we put this onto the nozzle of the sausage so machine. So what do they use right. nowadays? And this is very important that we use a natural casing, a natural intestine, mm -hmm. as opposed to the the cowhide synthetic, which oh, commercial sausage cowhide. makers are now tending to use. So it just gives you a better, uh, a, a better texture at the end of the. Well, and, and exactly. The when taste, you cook yeah. it, that natural texture, it isn't chewy and it's or just rubbery like, or you know, the original thing like which sometimes you find on some sausages. Enjoy yeah. sometimes. How how long is that? But this is well, the intest <laughs> one intestine from one pig, no? Because he it, it has it's continuous. In Victorian times, it was 19 yards. Now it's 21 meters. Okay, that, so now that, I know how long that is. And that's that's interesting because as we've improved the commercial viability of our pigs, the intestine has got longer, and probably the ability to, to absorb more food. Mm -hmm. It's just one of them things, but yeah, there is yeah. definitely 21 really? yards, 21 meters. That sound. 
See, this is what I don't get. You know how it's like that, that saying, like, don't look at how sausage is made? This looks delicious. It makes me want to oh, eat it even more. They have this... Uh, coil. Yeah, this thing, coil. And why is that? Don't know. No? Probably because we couldn't tie knots. <laughs> really? <laughs> Maybe it came with the Germans. Because Maybe. they make... The rings of sausage. Okay, yeah. So, you know, maybe they were making a sausage with a ring, you know, like a ring, like the sausage. Sometimes in Germany you have the yeah. type of sausages. We don't know. And it's quite it's quite pink, no? That's a nice traditional Cumberland sausage. Yeah. You can see the white bits. You can see the ATVL. You can see a that little bit nice. of the herbs. You can see where the fat is, which also makes you, makes you realise that there's no... Not much of it. Sometimes I think you see sausages in Italy like this. I get you? what she means yeah, there. Yeah, marriage. That like the fact that you can see it clearly makes you think that there's less of it because like you you feel like you can see it all. I get that makes sense. Then we have one that's served like this. That's called zampina. Zampina. <laughs> yeah, it means it means little pole. All oh, right. But it's served in a coil right. like this. Yeah, and it's like the grilling sausage. Once in a coil, a proper Cumberland sausage needs to be left overnight to let the spices and herbs blend into the meat. Peter grilled some from yesterday's production for us to taste. Here, Claudia, have a taste of our sausage. Thank you. Here you go. Chef. <laughs> got, to, got to remember the camera, but then he gives you my best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the thickness is important. Oh, it looks beautiful. The coarse texture is important. But above all else, the taste in the mouth. Please. Yeah. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. That crack that you feel you when you bite into the natural casing. Natural casing. Yeah. Natural intestine. Yeah. You're also mm. tasting meat. Definitely. That's prominent. A little bit of influence with the seasoning. Pepper. Pepper. A bit of pepper there. Yeah. yeah. Obviously. Mm. Bit of nutmeg. Can you taste it? Yeah, a bit of that as well. And to be cooking this mm -hmm. on the barbecue, on the grill, in the oven, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. It is, yeah, you can taste the meat. Like, it is It is quite meaty. Claudia, mm -hmm. if you own a Rolls Royce, uh, you wish. wouldn't put cheap oil <laughs> in the engine. Don't put bad food in your mouth. This is fantastic. Yeah. So, I gotta learn how that. would you recommend eating this? I mean, apart from this way, like on a stick. Traditionally, Oh. Fingers and mash. Huh. In the ring. Ah. A wow. proper Cumberland sausage. A good Beautiful. meal. I mean, maybe a meal nowadays for two. Um, I'll eat that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have a new project Mashed that we're potato. really excited to show you. Here's the trailer. This is the largest free kitchen in the world. Open 24 hours year round. This food hall feeds 100,000 people for free each day. Wow, voice crack. Just one of these huge bowls is enough to feed around 10,000 people. We visited Amritsar in India to find out everything that goes into feeding such a large crowd and to see just what it takes to make such big batches. Awesome video, as always. I want a sausage now. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Did I have any questions or anything? Um, yeah, I've cooled off now because of the air conditioning behind me. Good call. All right, guys, hope you're all doing well. If not, you'll be good soon. Don't worry. Emotions are fickle. Bye, guys.